Today on our 2017 Subaru Forester, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Blue Ox base plate kit with a removable arms, part number BX3619. Now keep in mind our base plate is only one of the components that we need to safely flat tow our Subaru. So here's what our base plate is going to look like. The main purpose is it's going to serve as a connection point between our Subaru and our motorhome so we can get down the road safely. One of the best parts about this base plate is it does have removable arms. If we pull out on this lever, turn, we can pull the arm out, and as you can see, it's going to hide really well and we're not going to have anything distracting on the front of our Subaru. Now one of the best parts about this base plate is the fact that the arms are removable. We can pull on this pin, rotate the arm, and then we can remove it. With the arms removed, you can see that it's going to hide nicely in the lower part of our fascia here. We're not going to have to worry about hitting our shins whenever we walk by or whenever we're parking because they're not going to be sticking out. And it's even going to come with some caps that we can put into our base plate. That way we can keep the dirt and debris out when we're not towing our Subaru. Because of the design of the base plate, it's going to spread that towing force evenly across the front. And that's going to take some of that strain and stress off of our suspension and it's going to be a lot more stable than a single point connection. Now right on the inside of where our drawbars go, we're going to have our safety chain connection points allowing us to easily hook up our safety chains. And just onto the inside of that, we're going to have these two brackets where we can mount our wiring so it's going to be easily accessible at the front of our vehicle. As far as installation goes, it is going to be rather straightforward. We're going to have to remove the fascia, do some minor drilling to get the brackets in place, but we, as you can see, we didn't have to trim anything on the fascia itself. Our base plate is going to be compatible with a wide variety of Blue Ox tow bars, as well as some Roadmaster tow bars with an adapter that is sold separately. So now that we've seen what our base plate looks like and going over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to open up our hood, and if we come right by our headlight, we're going to have a few pushpin fasteners that we're going to have to remove on each side. One of them is going to be right at the corner of our headlight, and if we follow down to our grill, we're going to have another two going towards the center. And that same combination is going to be on each side. So we can take a flathead screwdriver or a trim panel tool. There's going to be a little notch in there. If you come underneath, we're going to pry up on the center section to relieve the tension off the clip. And we can come underneath the bottom and pull the rest of the push pin out. And we'll do that for all six of our push pins. We come right where our fascia meets our fender. There's going to be a push pin directly up that we're going to need to remove. Now again, you just want to take a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver and we're going to pop it out the same way. And we're going to do that on both sides. We can go ahead and pull our fascia off now. It's always a good idea to get an extra set of hands that way it's not so hard to work with and you don't have to worry about damaging it. So we're going to start where our fender meets our fascia and we're going to pull on the fascia. I'm just going to have some clips holding it in place. Just going to want to work your way towards the outside, towards the center of the car. Just reach down, start peeling it away. And if you do have fog lights, you want to be careful and make sure you disconnect them at the bottom here. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside so it won't get damaged. Now underneath the front of our vehicle, kind of towards the center, we're going to find a little support tab that's going to have another push pin that's holding it in place. And if we move farther out, we'll find another one. And then we're going to have a final third one behind our little deflector at the very corner. So we can take our trim panel tool. We're going to come to the outside of that push pin. Pop the center section out and remove it just like we did with the other ones. And we're going to remove the other three on the other side. On the driver's side, right by our washer tank, we're going to have this sensor here. It's being held on by a bolt. We're going to grab a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to pull the bolt out. Move the sensor out of the way. And then we're going to need to get our trim panel tool again and pull that clip out so we can get our wiring out of the way. Just come behind it, pry the wiring out of the frame, and just tuck it aside for right now. 
On the passenger side, right by where our horn is, we're gonna have another clip holding our wiring to the frame. We're gonna pull that out. Again, just grab your screwdriver or trim panel tool, pry it out of the frame. And we're just gonna push it out of the way, give ourselves a little bit more room. Now our bumper beam cover here is gonna to need to be removed as well. We're gonna have one bolt on top on the very corners on each side, and then one right in the middle. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket to pull them out. And then along the bottom of the cage, we're gonna have four bolts that we're gonna to have to remove as well. You're gonna kinda of wanna rotate it towards the back of the car and lift up, and we can set this aside. And then on the very end here, we're gonna have two bolts on the top, as well as two on the bottom that we're gonna to need to remove so we can get our actual bumper beam out of the way. You're gonna to wanna to use a 12 millimeter socket, and we can pull those bolts out. Now you may have to move or remove the foam to get to the bolt at the bottom here on the inside. And we'll remove the other four on the other side. Just want to be careful, make sure you have a firm hold on the bumper beam so it doesn't fall off when you pull that last bolt out. You're going to want to lift up, then we can pull our bumper beam out and set it aside. Now right where we took off our bumper beam, at the lower outer mounting point, you'll see that kind of bows out a little bit, that flange right there. I'm gonna take a marker and I'm gonna come straight up. And I'm gonna go up right below that mounting point and we're gonna need to cut that little triangle out just so we have room for the base plate to go in. Now I'm gonna be using a rotary tool to cut that out. You can use whatever you have available, whether it's a angle grinder or a sawzall. You just wanna be careful not to cut too much. You just wanna cut out that little section right there. Now that we have this side cut out, we're going to cut the other side out as well. Now it's never a good idea to leave exposed metal on your car, so I'm going to come back with a little bit of spray paint and paint the bare metal, preventing any kind of rust or corrosion from building up. Now the foam piece that's sticking out, we're going to need to remove that as well as this plastic holder that's here. So we can take our trim panel tool, just going to come underneath, it's just a clip that's going into the frame pop it out and set it aside. And we'll do that for both sides. Now right in the center, we're gonna have our temperature sensor and the bracket that's gonna be attached to it. Now, depending on how far it's sticking out, you just wanna make sure that it's tucked in close to the radiator so it's not gonna interfere with our base plate. So you can just kinda of bend it in a little bit. You don't need to bend it completely flat, but you just want it to go in so that it's not gonna interfere. In the side of our frame rail, we're gonna have several holes. Now a lot of them are gonna have this large hole here, but if you don't and it's not that big, you're gonna to need to ream it out so that our half inch bolt will fit through. But as you can see, we got plenty of room to get the bolt in and not have to worry about drilling it out. If you do have to enlarge this hole, you're gonna to wanna to enlarge it to 17 30 seconds. Now our half inch bolt is gonna be securing our base plate through that large hole. Now with all the bolts, you wanna grab some Loctite. You just wanna put a little bit on each one of the threads. And then for our half inch bolt, it's gonna be securing it. We're gonna follow it up with the lock washer and then a half inch flat washer. And that's what's gonna be securing our base plate right here. You just wanna make sure you put the Loctite on before you put all your bolts in place. Now the next set of hands, we're gonna put our main receiver brace in place. You're gonna start out with it pointing towards the back and then rotate it so the tabs will go vertically. So then we can take our half inch bolt, and push it through to help hang it. On the inside of the frame, we're gonna take a flat washer, followed by a lock washer, and then finally secure it down with a half inch lock nut. Just wanna make sure you get each side at least hand tight so we won't have to worry about the brace falling down. Now that we have our base plate loosely in place, you wanna make sure that it's nice and level going across the front of your car. So now that we know it's nice and level, I'm gonna come back with a three quarter inch socket 
and wrench and tighten up the two bolts. Then I'm going to come back with a torque wrench and that same wrench on the inside to hold the nut. And I'm going to torque those down and we'll find that specification in our instructions. We'll do that on the other side as well. On the inside of the driver's frame rail, right above where we attached that bolt, we're going to have a weld nut. Now that weld nut is going to interfere with one of our bolts, so we're going to need to grab a chisel and a hammer and knock it off. Now on the side of our main receiver brace, we're going to have three more holes that we're going to have mounting locations. Down at the very bottom, there is going to be a gap in between our brace and the frame, but we're going to need to drill a hole through each one of these mounting points. So I'm going to come back with a 13 30 second drill bit. I'm just going to mark the center location. for each one of my holes. I'm gonna come back with a smaller drill bit and drill my pilot hole out. With my pilot hole drill, I'm gonna come back and enlarge those to the full 13, 30 seconds. Now for our sensor, we are gonna to have to drill out the bracket so it can accept the larger hardware. So if we come to the back, if we just squeeze these two tabs together, we can actually slide the mounting bracket off. Be a little bit easier to drill with the bracket off the sensor, that way we don't have to worry about it twisting or damaging the sensor itself. And we're gonna need to drill that hole out to a 13, 30 seconds, just like we did in the frame. Now that we have this side drilled out and all the holes ready, as well as the mounting bracket, we're gonna go and repeat that on the other side. So we can put our hardware in place. We're gonna take one of our short 3 8 bolts. We're gonna go through the top hole, making sure we have that Loctite on there. And on the inside, we're gonna put a flat washer, followed by a lock washer, and then we're gonna secure it down with the lock nut. Now for our middle bolt, we're actually gonna take our bolt and go through our sensor bracket just make sure you tuck your wires out of the way so you can get everything in place. And there's not a, a perfect way to mount it up, but I'm doing it so the connector is at the bottom of the bracket. That way, if any water does come, it'll come down and we'll get trapped inside. And then we're gonna put the same combination of hardware on the inside with our flat washer, lock washer, and lock nut. Now for our bottom mounting location, you may need to move that plastic liner out of the way, but we're going to take one of our larger 3A bolts and a 3A spacer, and that spacer is going to go in between the frame here and our main receiver brace. So we're going to reach up, slide it into place, making sure the bolt goes all the way through. And then on the inside, we're going to secure it with that same combination of flat washer, lock washer, nut. I'm going to come back with the 9 16th wrench and socket and snug up all my 3 ace hardware. I'm going to come back and I'm going to torque all my hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. With your fascia off, it would be a good time to run any kind of wiring or any other kind of accessory that you would need to get to the front because it is going to be a lot easier to run all those wires without the fascia being installed. So our kit's also going to come with some permanent safety cables. Now we're going to need to wrap this around our frame and then attach it down here at our base plate. So I'm going to take one end, I'm going to go over the top of my frame. Just kind of watch where your wires are. If you can, you want to go underneath them. So don't crush the wires with the cable. And we can feed it down. And if we need to, we can just kind of reach in behind this plastic and pull it out. Now that I can reach both ends right here, I'm going to take my quick link. I want to open it up all the way. I'm going to go through both cables and you're going to attach it 
directly to the base plate. And once you have it tightened up, you want to grab a 5 8 wrench. Just make sure that that quick link's nice and tight and everything's secure. And now that this side is on, we'll go ahead and put the other side on. Just want to keep in mind when you're routing your cable around the frame, you want to stay away from any wires, any moving parts, or anything that may get damaged from rubbing up against it. So we can take our bumper beam now and line it up, put it back into position. You just want to take at least one bolt on each side, put it in hand tight so that we don't have to worry about it falling off. Now the bottom outer bolt hole for our bumper, if we look at the back side, that weld nut that's going to hold it in place is very close, if not touching our base plate. So we are going to have to use a spacer so that we can make sure that the bolt doesn't draw in too far. They suggest using a 5 16 washer, so I'm going to take three of them. They're not included in our kit, we need to pick them up at the local hardware store and we're going to thread our bolt in hand tight. That's going to draw it out just enough to where it'll still engage that nut on the back side, but it won't be hitting the base plate. And we'll need to do that for both sides. And then we can come back with our 12 millimeter socket and tighten up all of our bumper bolts. Then we can take the cage that goes around our bumper, put that back in place. Just want to make sure everything lines up. And again, Get a couple bolts in hand tight, we don't have to worry about it falling down. Then we can come back with that 10 millimeter socket and tighten up all the bolts. Now we can go ahead and put our fascia back in place. Just want to make sure that you get the tabs to fit in between the grill there. We can get everything lined back up. We can start pushing the corner back into place. Just want to make sure that the bottom part and the fender well is lined up as well. Make it a little bit easier to get everything in. And we can put our push pins back in place. And with our push pins, you want to make sure you push that outer section in first and then lock it down by pushing in the center section. So then we can take our removable arms and we're going to come in and we're going to put it in until that pin touches the back of the base plate. We're going to push in and turn and it will lock into position. Now we can hook up to our motorhome and hit the road. And that will finish up your look at the Blue Ox base plate kit with the removable arms, part number BX3619 on our 2017 Subaru Forester.